Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Ansel. I work at Meta on PyTorch. And today I'm going to talk about a new Halide backend for Torch Inductor. Uh, so to give a little bit of background, first I'm going to talk a bit about Torch Compile. Hopefully uh, a lot of people here already, already know about that. But Torch Compile, uh, the, the contract for the user is very simple. You put this decorator on your model, uh, and your model goes faster. But beneath it, there's actually two different pieces. Um, the first piece is uh, Torch Dynamo, which is a Python um, uh, bytecode to bytecode uh, transpiler, where the goal is uh, to analyze a Python frame uh, right before it's executed and convert it into a graph which we can pack to, uh, pass to a backend compiler. Now, there's many different backend compilers uh, for Torch Dynamo, um, but the default one, if you don't pass a backend equal string, uh, is Torch Inductor. Um, and so I've talked about Torch Inductor in, at past uh, PyTorch conferences, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here. Um, but the basic idea is there's a progressive lowering process where um, we compile uh, uh, the program, we do a lot of graph level optimizations, and then in the back end, uh, we have CodeGen for uh, uh, previously two different backends, uh, Triton and C++. And this talk is about a third backend uh, that was we recently added and it's in, in, in uh, the trunk, uh, which is Halide. Uh, and here's some, just to, to recap, here's some, some previous performance numbers that we published in our ASPLOS paper um, comparing uh, uh, Torch Inductor to different uh, backends uh, for Torch.compile. And so, so why, why a Halide backend? And the, really the primary motivation of a Halide backend is as a reference backend. So um, as a PyTorch developer, pretty, pretty frequently uh, uh, hardware vendors or compiler developers come to us and they're like, we want to extend uh, uh, Torch Compile to use our own uh, system. And uh, there's lots of different extension points. You can, you can in extend uh, Torch uh, Dynamo at the FX graph level, where we give you graph of optimi optimizations. You can add a backend to Triton, which a lot of, a lot, a lot of vendors are, are doing. Um, but if you have a, a sort of lower level, um, kernel level DSL, and you want to extend PyTorch, um, we've previously ta talked about people adding uh, Torch inductor backends. And uh, we, we really wanted uh, uh, the Halite backend to be sort of a reference that, that uh, people can start with if they want to extend Torch Inductor with their own um, kernel level uh, DSL. And, and for, for picking Halite, Halite has inspired dozens of other compiler projects. Probably in machine learning, the most notable one is TVM, um, but there's other ones uh, that are either, either direct forks or uh, uh, have designs that were inspired by, by Halite. Um, and another motivation was to force generality in our compiler. By adding a backend with a really different programming model, um, we, we make, we've basically refactored Torch Inductor to have uh, a more extensible design and make it easier uh, for people to extend. And then an another sort of more personal reason is back in grad school, I built one of the first auto-tuners for Halide, so I know Halide pretty well, and so it was an easy thing for me to uh, build. Uh, so I think, I think the... the uh, most direct comparison uh, is TVM, which is the most um, popular other Halide-based uh, 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 backend for Torch Dynamo. So this is a comparison about how the two backends work. So both backends um, use tor uh, Torch Dynamo at the top level, um, but then uh, Torch Dynamo lowers, uh, or Torch Inductor uh, lowers all the way to the, the kernel level, which is either Triton, C++, or Halide. Um, while uh, TVM has a different uh, system where they're using the TorchScript IR as an intermediate language, and then there's um, a lowering stack using Relay or, re or more recently Rela Rela Relax, uh, which is uh, inference only and only supports about half of models. And so this approach uh, brings a lot more unity uh, between the Triton, C++, and, and Halide backends. Uh, so, so what's the current status? Like, like how well does it work? Well, most models are running correctly. We're, we're passing around 90% of the, um, the models are working on the CPU. And most of the remaining failures are in the Halide auto schedulers. Um, now, the early results, which I'll, I'll show some more later, um, show that uh, it's slower than uh, Triton or C++ on average. So you're not, you're not going to get a big speed up from that. Um, but um, on some cases, especially on ARM, uh, we're seeing some speed ups. And one, one big lesson is that you know, 10 years ago, uh, when I was working on Halide auto schedulers uh, or, or Halide auto tuners, um, coming up with schedules uh, in the Halide model is a really hard problem. 
And it remains a really hard problem today where uh, the existing halide auto schedulers don't work very well, the auto tuners uh, don't scale up past micro benchmarks, and to get better performance, we're really going to need uh, a bespoke auto scheduler for halide that targets uh, machine learning workflows. But, but performance isn't the main goal. The main goal is, is to make uh, the compiler more extensible. Uh, so here's some example code gen. I'm going to com basically compare the code gen we generate for Triton and the code gen we generate for Halide. So here's some example torch inductor generated Triton code for a simple sum uh, of operations. And so you can see here um, that uh, I'm not expecting you to, to understand everything here, but basically what the Triton code looks like is you have a block accumulator. You, you slide that block accumulator across all your data, and at the very end, you do a shared memory reduction uh, to, to uh, go down to a single element. And on you know, my local machine, uh, this takes uh, uh, a third of a millisecond about. And so here's uh, the same code using the Halide backend. And not notably, this code is simpler because we haven't encoded this sort of like block accumulation logic in the schedule. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's more than 4x slower uh, than the Triton code. And uh, we worked, and the, and the CPU equivalent is, is slightly slower, 1.2x slower than the, uh, than the C++ backend. And so we worked with the, the authors of Halide and it took about a month to come up with a better schedule for this. And even, even after sort of a handwritten schedule, we were able to get it to about 10% uh, within 10% within slower than Triton. So here's some more aggregate results. So in this case, uh, I have uh, 80 different models. And what I'm showing is the distribution, where uh, green means that Halide is faster than the Triton or C++ uh, backend. Uh, blue means that it's slower than Triton but faster than PyTorch Eager. Uh, green, or, or sorry, uh, 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 yellow uh, means it's, uh, it runs, but it's slower than Eager mode PyTorch. And red means it's not working, um, usually because of a failure in the, in the Halide auto scheduler. And so you can see here that uh, on, with, with only a few exceptions, uh, the Halide backend is uh, slower than the Triton backend, um, but, the, but for uh, ARM specifically, we're actually seeing that on about half of models, it's faster. And this is mainly because uh, our C++ backend is mostly optimized for XCT6, and I think it sh shows that we've neglected ARM a bit. Um, and more recently, uh, we've, been, we've been trying to improve that and fix that. All right, uh, so to conclude, uh, Torch Inductor's Halide backend is a reference backend uh, designed to help uh, others extend Torch Compile and Torch Inductor. Um, we have an ongoing collaboration um, uh, on a new Halide auto scheduler for machine learning workloads, and uh, I'd love for people to reach out if they want to collaborate. Thank you very much. <laughs>